Hey, look. So here's the thing, all right? I don't know if Jimenez is actually going to be better than Ella. Ella doesn't really get an improvement, but it's not like she's getting power crept. She gets power crept in terms of, uh, in terms of, in terms of, like, kit design, though. Jimenez's kit is so much nicer. Ella is the best DPS Lamau. True! Hell Flame and Strongbox, minor improvement. I guess... I don't wanna, though. Like, I... This feels like a lie. Like... Cause you shouldn't strongbox Pale Flame. <laughs> Fine. I am doing this reluctantly, though. Alright, Yunfei! Tankfei? What about Tankfei? Tankfei's stonks goes up? Why? With Linny? No. I don't know. I don't... Okay, I, I see where you're going. <sighs> sure, I guess. Yeah. If you really want a, a defensive option, you can use her. Kazuha will go into minor improvement. Uh, for the same reason as Bennett and Shang Ling. Yoimiya, I think we'll go in no improvements. Like, so do the stream? Yeah, I'm cosplay. I'm pretending I'm playing TFT right now. Like, you could argue that she gets slightly improved by this, but like, ugh, I don't know. Not really. And this, I guess, but like, eh. Sayu! Raiden! Uh, Raiden gets a minor improvement. Emblem going to Strongbox is a nice little thing. Also, you could... We still don't have any fucking clue how often this hits, right? But if it hits fast enough, Hydro MC could be a decent option for Hyper Bloom. With Nahida. Perhaps. It's a little cope. It's just going to depend heavily on how fast the application is and how fast it hits and how many times it hits but yeah uh sarah technically you can strongbox emblem i guess but like be for real are you gonna strongbox emblem to improve your sarah don't lie to me all right kogumi um kogumi goes into minor improvements uh one of the biggest downsides of the clam domain is that it's with us still and both Husk and Clam are artifacts that, just that are actually quite good, but that really get held back by the fact that they're kind of situational and niche, and they're both together, and they're not used in the same teams, which means that most people that want to get either Husk or Clam don't want to get the other. And that makes it so that farming for the domain for a lot of people is going to feel like shit. Because you're going to get a set you'll never use. So it being on Strongbox matters a little bit more than usual. But then also you're getting TOM on Strongbox. Honestly, you could argue that Kogumi gets a major improvement. Man, no. No. I I'm looking at how, how much Fischl is gaining. I don't know. Like, I, 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 no. No, it's not comparable. Nah, it's not. I got. I gotta be. I gotta be for real. Alloy. Toma. This is not great. But if you're playing Toma and you don't have Fav, and like a Wanderer team, it is a nice free to play option. Right. This is a free to play option for Toma in. Uh, like a craftable option for Toma in uh, like hyper teams. Uh, so it's gonna go to minor improvement. Ito, minor improvement. Goro, minor improvement. Both of them for the same reason. Husk being in the strong box now. Shenha! I don't think gains any, right? Because neither of the new pole arms are good for her. None of the characters really work well with her. I guess you could argue that like. You can use her with, uh, Femine and, like, try to keep a cryo hit to consume the stacks. 
or maybe i get yeah like you you consume the stacks with the frost damage it wouldn't be completely garbage but it wouldn't be great either i don't think it really improves her yunjin uh yunjin doesn't get anything right i mean again right husk being here can potentially be an upgrade for yunjin but i think husk is not that good on yunjin most of the time so nah i think it'll go in no improvement yai miko so here's the thing we gotta figure out if we put yai in major improvement or minor improvement because she's definitely not gaining as much from the set as fischl does but she's also gaining a lot from the set i think the main issue with her is that if you're playing her on field right you're not actually gaining the um you're not actually gaining the second part of this for a lot of your damage and most importantly if you're in aoe uh, a lot of, or a, a bigger portion of your damage is coming from your ult, which makes it so that this won't be as useful. Like, it is an improvement for Yai, but it's not as big as official. Chaos, please. It's gonna, it's gonna depend too much on how often you're swapping into her. Honestly, I don't think she goes in major improvement. I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry, but, uh... doesn't get enough of an improvement to go into major improvement in my opinion gilded is very good on her already not really gilded isn't that good on yai yai just doesn't have a good artifact set like keep in mind when you're in single target yai's skill every eight seconds will trigger three reactions and one of those reactions is going to be triggered when gilded passive is down so you're only getting the em bonus on two-thirds of your reactions Right, because cause, uh, Gilded, if we look at the description, uh, I'm sure I have it on someone, but... Within 8 seconds of triggering an element of reaction, you gain buffs, whatever. This event can be triggered once every 8 seconds, the character... Uh, wait, yeah. This event can be, can be triggered once every 8 seconds, which means that when the buff is active, you can't re-trigger it. Which means that it will expire before you can trigger it again, right? Because they're the same, they're the same timing. And the hit that triggers it doesn't benefit from its own bonuses. And so you're losing a lot of uptime on this. Uh, it, it doesn't affect Hyperbloom teams because a Hyperbloom damage is always calculated dynamically, which means if you gain EM after triggering Hyperbloom before the seed hits the enemy, you will it will use your new EM value. And so you will trigger Hyperbloom, is gonna make the seed fly you gain your em bonus from that before the seed hits so you get 100 percent uptime on the passive because the damage happens after the reaction is triggered but with yai when you're playing her in aggravate the damage happens as the reaction is triggered and because you're not triggering that many reactions you're losing a pretty significant amount of your reaction damage or of, of, of the like theoretical ceiling uh reaction damage because every time you have to reprog the passive you don't gain the benefits from it on field she has 100 percent uptime not really like you still will always have one attack where you like it's impossible to have 100 percent uptime on an aggravate character with gilded the first attack every eight seconds will always not benefit from the bonuses it's going to be better than the 66% from if you're only using her off field because instead of it being one every three, it's now one every five or six or seven, depending on how much you normally charge attack, but it's still not going to be 100%. Also, if you're playing her on field, you're only getting 40% from this. But like, my point is basically, Gilded is not that great on Yai. This is probably an improvement on Yai, but it's not that huge of an improvement in a lot of situations because... In AoE, this doesn't really help her that much. Uh, and in single target, if you're playing her in aggravate teams, it's pretty likely you'll spend a decent amount of time on her. It depends on which aggravate team you're using. And, like, it's still it's still an, imp an improvement. And in non-aggravate teams, it's a massive improvement for Yai. Because in non-aggravate teams, uh, you don't really have as much of an incentive to spend field time on her. Because Fischl's A4 doesn't do nearly as much damage. So even if you are playing her with Fischl, 
there's less of an incentive to draw it with an electro character. Um, and also, her best option is a two piece, two piece. So it's like, ugh, right? It is, yeah, that is true. It's also a pretty huge improvement on her uh, if you're using her with a high thumb. That is, that is, that is a fair point. And I know that some people do use her with a high thumb. So that's relevant. It, it, depending on the team, it's either going to be major improvement or minor improvement, basically. It's kind of just eh, in the middle. We can put her in major improvement, but it's like, yeah. Next up, Ayato. All right, I got I to stand up for this one. Well, not stand up, but I got to sit up upright. Ayato goes into major improvement. Because here's the thing. If you're playing Ayato in Burgeon, not only can he fully stack this, and he's one of the only characters that can fully stack this reliably, but all of his, or most of his damage is also getting increased by this. That's a pretty huge fucking deal, actually. Okay, re realistically, though, he's not that popular in Burgeon teams, and he does have a lot of other teams, so it's probably more of a minor improvement with a situational major improvement. But but still, still, it's, it's, it's significant. Why Burgeon specifically? Because it's the only way that you can guarantee um, that your HP will change by doing damage to yourself. Can you say the same for Child? Child sucks in Burgeon. <laughs> I mean, he's fine in, like, the, the integrational. He's, he's okay, but meh. Um, but he can't benefit as much from this. Should brog with healing as well? Sure, but if you're healing when you're full health, your HP is not changing. Is it he's huge? Why is he not popular in Burgeon? It's not that he's not popular in Burgeon. It's that Burgeon is not popular. Therefore, even the most popular Burgeon team will not be popular. Yelan! Uh, Yelan gets a minor improvement from this. That's kind of it. It's a nice one though. It's cool. It's useful. We take those, but it's nothing, nothing huge. Kuki. Um, I don't think there's anything significant with Kuki. I'm gonna say no improvement. Hazo. Here's the thing. All right. Hazo gets a major improvement, but he's still. It's not a major improvement. It's a. It's a fine improvement. Okay. Here's the thing. Okay. Hazo's best teams is not carry Hazo. The new set improves carry hazo pretty significantly but not enough for it to be better than his actual best team which is just him as a driver for a taser or a salad team right but it does close the gap yeah he, i guess he's also good in mono pyro all in all it's just like it does pretty significantly improve him but only in a team where he wasn't that good to begin with so it doesn't actually translate to an actual major improvement in his overall strength <sighs> kekona tainari Probably gets a minor improvement overall. Next up, we have Cole. Nothing here. No improvement. Dory. I also think no improvement. Nilo. I'm gonna sneeze. Really hard to tell how actually good Hydro Traveler is gonna be because both of the both of Hydro Traveler's skills, right? Both the elemental skill and the elemental burst are multi-hit abilities, which we don't actually know how many times they hit. So it's impossible to tell how good this is gonna be the new skill set is fine on like vape nilo but i don't even think it's better than the alternatives realistically because you're only getting 40 percent damage and at that point considering it doesn't actually increase your old damage i don't even know if it's actually good enough i think i think she's gonna go in no improvement i shall say with on field nilo bloom but why do you care about crit on nilo it's not as good as HP. Tenacity Strongbox. You don't really care that much about Nilo's substats. You don't really need great tenacity pieces. You care about your your artifact quality a lot more on the other characters on the team than you do on on Nilo. And Suggs are kind of pog. I mean, they're they're fine. Yeah, like Nilo teams aren't that reliant on getting good artifacts. Try to mention new HP substat sword better than Dull Sword on Nilo. Wait. What HP substat sword? None of these swords have an HP substat. <laughs> Sino. Uh, this should be better than Deathmatch for on him. Probably. Is it though? Probably. A minor improvement. All right. Can this dick fit in your mouth? I guess you're getting this. It's like a, a cope option if you don't have Fav or if you want to put Fav on Yao Yao. Um, but their only real team is Nilo team and I think you'd rather use Katane. Even even then, so I'm not a huge fan. I'm gonna go no improvement. Nahida. 
Now he does get some minor improvement just because, like, Fishel gets a huge one. Yaya gets a pretty big one as well. A lot of characters that work with Nahida get, get improvements. And uh, she's getting a new artifact set that can be used for her, which is about as good as her other ones, which makes it even easier to build her. Lila! You get a nice cope option if you don't have Fav, I guess. Worm! You know, really getting this to proc with his teams. This might be better. I mean, this is probably better than fucking Frost Bearer as a free-to-play option. Because one of his free-to-play options kind of suck. Like, this is kind of, this is probably kind of nice to get. But it's not big. Minor improvement, sure. Playing pretty craftable? Yeah, it is. Uh, better than Witsa? Fuck no, but it's a craftable and not everyone has Witsa. Farazan! I mean, technically, Shao and Wanderer get minor improvements, so Farazan gets indirect minor improvement, sure, whatever. Uh, Yao Yao. Uh, unironically, I think that's something that a few, a, a bunch of people might be, like, a little, might not realize. Yao Yao has something that synergizes incredibly well with this. The way that this works, you want to get small incremental HP changes. Because if you take too much damage, you'll insta-die, and if you heal too much, you'll heal to full health, and when you're full health, more healing won't prog this anymore. The fact that Yao Yao's passive, uh, this one? Yeah. Um, makes you rege regenerate HP every second based on 0.8% of Yao Yao's HP is unironically kind of huge because she gives incredibly small heals, which is going to make it so that you don't heal back to full and you can keep getting those heals without needing to take another hit, which is nice. Because of that, don't level Yao Yao's E too much. This isn't, this doesn't, change based on Yaya's E level. It's a it's a flat amount. It's a it's it's her it's an ascension passive. But yeah, because of that, Yaya has a small little upside in teams where you're gonna wanna try to make this work, even if you don't have other good ways of making your HP change. Which is a minor improvement. Because at the end of the day, this set will be a fine just slap this on anyone set, right? Like it's it, it if you don't have a great set for someone, you can just slap them on this and hope that you get some uptime on it. Yeah, I guess it's, it's also fair that Farazan arguably, you could say, gets a buff from the new skill set. Because her C6 deals skill damage. But I still think Tenacity is better. Yeah, you're also getting Tenacity Strongbox, which can be nice for Yao Yao. But, uh, yeah. All right, Alhytham. Let's talk about Alhytham. Alhytham, I, I know that a lot of people saw the new set and were like, wow, this is going to be insane on Alhytham. No, it's not. It's bad on Alhytham. Don't try to make it work. It's it's dog shit. It's worse than Gilded. However, Alhytham does still get a somewhat sizable buff through the Wolf Fang. Alhytham doesn't have a good four-star, like a great four-star weapon. Right now, his best four-star weapon is just an Iron Stain or an Umbrella. Which are okay, but they're nothing crazy, right? Wolf Fang is just better. Black Sword isn't very good because most of Alhytham's damage is coming from his skill and burst. Yeah, I mean, Xyphos is fine as well, obviously, but it's a... Weapon Banner exclusive, and usually when you're going on the Weapon Banner, you're probably trying to go for the 5 star. This, right? It's a Battle Pass weapon. Which means that it is not free to play, but if you're buying, if you're planning on buying, buying the battle pass, anyways, you get to choose this without having to rely on the gotcha system. Um, so it's not for everyone, but it's it is a nice thing to be there, I guess, uh, and it is a pretty sizable uh, increase on a high thumb. And as we can see, uh, Wolfang is now like his best option. Umbrella is relying on being in single target, so when you're in AoE, it's not actually that. So Wolfang will overall generally be a little bit better, and Wolfang with Refines does start becoming uh, even even better of a weapon. <sighs> These assumptions... Uh, at the end of the day, it's not a major increase. It's not as big as I expected it to be, honestly. But it is a nice little thing. If you want to do it, Like that's cool. Hoggers, I guess. Find it funny how a three-star weapon is still better. Harminger's insane. It just is what it is, man. It's just hard to stay at those HP uh, HP levels reliably. All right, Deya. 
Not really good on Dea. 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 However, he is a charge attack carry, which means you have a bit of an incentive to go for defensive utility options. And if you do, you have a pretty decent incentive to have them be pyro because you're getting 20% damage bonus if they are. Which means that, unironically, Dea is an okay option for Linny. And being okay is unironically a major improvement for Dea. Her being fine is like huge compared to what she usually is. Mika. Mika's a fucking joke. Kave! No improvements. Just none. None. How do I, why do I... Why did I fucking click on X? Am I blind or am I stupid? Don't answer that. I know it's both. Okay, shut up. Okay, um, Baiju. I don't think you really want to play Baiju with any of these. I guess you could argue that this is fine for him if you try to build him mix of HP and damage, but like that's cope. Okay, I, I do, I, I could see a world where Baiju's fine with Hydro Traveler, but Hydro Traveler needs to be good for that. So I don't know about that. Does a new set buff clean? No, it doesn't. Why would it buff clean? Karara. No improvement. I think that's just... So now that leaves us with Travelers. I, I skipped Venti because... Venti doesn't get better or worse based on characters or artifacts or anything like that. He gets better or worse based on what enemies are introduced. And we don't have any leaks on the new enemies yet. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think Geo Traveler really gets anything. I think... I don't... I mean, I, I guess... Geo Traveler gets the fucking skill set, but like it's Geo Traveler is so bad that it's not gonna matter. Animal Traveler doesn't really get anything. Electro Traveler doesn't really get anything. Dendro Traveler might. I mean, it depends on how Hydro MC works. We'll see, I guess. But yeah, so so this basically does it for like what my initial expectations for characters are gonna be. Doot, doot.